Hello YouTube friends. I'm going to talk to you today while I do this job. This colourful thing that's been on the board behind me uh, for the last few weeks. Uh, I finished quilting it yesterday. Now I was going to make a video yesterday because yesterday was Sunday and sometimes I put the camera on and chat to you while I'm working. Well yesterday I just got a sort of... Um, do you ever do this where you just get your head into a job and you get your head down and you just go for it? Well, that's what I did yesterday. I wanted to finish quilting this quilt so that I could bind it this morning, get the whole thing finished. I've got the label partly made and get it off to the customer. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I've just sewn the binding on and the binding is a very scrappy binding. So what's the word for this one? Um, piano keys or it's got a name I don't know what it is but I've made this very scrappy binding to go with this very colorful quint quilt it's got a lovely pale green background pale, you know solid green background which I like uh which you know makes it a little bit less crazy because it is quite a crazy quilt this one uh, so what I'm going to do today then, I've got everything I need assembled here I've got a cup of tea, glass of water, I've got some new thread I've got my needle, my thimble, and I'll tell you what I've also got. I invested in a new pair of sewing scissors because I've been using the Fiskars, the orange handled ones, for years and years. And every now and then you can't stop yourself from using it on a bit of paper, can you? And I hadn't realised just how blunt they were. So what I did was um, I went onto a comparison website. I just put into Google which are the sharpest, best sewing scissors, something like that. And I got this comparison website with all these different scissors reviewed. I can't even remember what these are called and it's not written on here. It says, what does it say? No, made in Japan. Let's see if I can put that there so that you can see it. Can you actually even see that? That's all it says. I'll see if I can find the um, paperwork that came with it. Oh my God. God, these are the best scissors I've ever seen in my life. It's like cutting. In fact, you've got to be very careful that you're aiming correctly because it'll cut absolutely anything. But it's just made me realise that sometimes our kit needs to be replaced. Uh, like when I, I had my sewing machine mended when I was away in Canada. And I came back, it's like having a new machine. And sometimes I think I go too long before I realise that I need to do that. At the moment, the latest thing is I need to get my eyes tested because um, the glasses aren't passing muster anymore. That's annoying because they're expensive. However, <laughs> I've got this job this morning then. I'm going to be um, sewing the binding down on this quilt. It's a really nice narrow binding and when it sits on the other side, it'll look like that, which I think will look fantastic. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna chat to you guys while I do it. So I'm just going to trim this down carefully with my fantastic new scissors so that it's exactly the size I need it to be. So I'll do that. In fact, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to do that flat on the table. It's probably a better idea, isn't it? Well, that took a long time. I can swear this quilt's got more than five, four sides. Got at least six. It's a long way round. So, but these lovely new scissors of mine made very short work of the uh, of the task. Okay, so I'm going to get myself sorted now uh, with um, everything I need. I've got this lovely grey thread, which kind of you think grey with all these colours just disappears into the background grey. So I always use this kind of pale grey for everything, pretty much, unless something's really, really dark, and then maybe I'll use a darker grey. And I don't use it double, because it's good strong thread. Just use it single, because double, sometimes you can get yourself into a bit of a knot that's a bit too long. It doesn't need to be that long. God, these scissors. You don't even realise you've cut something. Okay, thimble on. Can't sew without thimble. I just can't. 
um, yeah, so much so that if I'm sewing and I can't find my thimble, uh, I've got to stop. One time I remember when I was sewing at my dad's, I was on what was called my sewing retreat when I was down at my dad's when my brother was away. I forgot to take my thimble. I had to order two on Amazon, arrived next day on Amazon Prime. Very wasteful. Still, I've got two more now. Okay, so that's how it's going to look on the back. Nice thin binding. And I'm just going to sit here and stitch away and chat with you guys. So if anyone's wondering where the cats are, don't wonder. They're all very happily sitting through in the sitting room with access to their food and nice comfy sofas. This is not a quilt. This is a quilt to someone else. And I like to limit the amount of time the cats spend asleep on it. And so to zero. So the cats have not been asleep on this quilt uh, at all. <laughs> OK, guys, so what have I been up to? Well, yesterday I spent the whole day uh, hand quilting this. I just decided that's what I was going to do. I put on an audio book. I worked out how long it was going to take me to do and I made snacks and things in between times. And I started at this o'clock and finished at that o'clock, which was a long time later, and finished the whole hand quilting. I use a sort of a like a, a big running stitch. It's called canther stitch uh, or just like it's a it's a, not a tiny, tiny quilting stitch, which is what my mum used to do. Uh, I'm not into that, but it's a, it's a stitch that just does the job of holding all the quilt layers together uh, in a really nice decorative way. And in fact, you can't see it on the front because there's so much colour going on on the front that you can't even see it. But you can see the grid on the back, which I like. OK, then. So this was uh, supposed to be a video yesterday, but there simply wasn't the willingness to make one. Sometimes I find if I stick the camera on and I'm not in the mood that you can tell it just doesn't come off right at all. I'm feeling in a much more chatty mood this morning. And so I'm. That's actually what I want to talk about a little bit, really, is. Um, I've noticed a little spike in numbers on YouTube, which is lovely. Thank you. It's welcome to all you new people. Uh, I see this comment a fair bit that says, oh, I've just found your videos and I'm really enjoying them. So thank you if that's you. But it made me wonder, well, how have you found it? Where did you find this video? I mean, did YouTube, the algorithm, stick it in your sidebar and recommend it? Did somebody in a uh, in a video or a podcast or a, or a vlog or something mention this channel? And it's made me wonder where new people come from, because, you know, just YouTube's really interesting. Uh, I came upon all this YouTube malarkey completely by accident. You know, if you follow my story right from September, three September, two and a half years ago, something like that, where I just propped my iPad up, turned the camera on and started wittering on about nothing at all. So nothing much has changed there. But just started chatting about the things I do. And I was talking to 10 people. And now I seem to be talking to quite a lot more, which is really lovely for me. I mean, it is. It's really nice. So but I'm kind of curious to know how people find what I'm doing and how they, you know, how they get to be watching this video in the first place. So it's at this point that I say, if you are new here and you like what I'm wittering on about, click the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up because those, I think, are the things that YouTube take notice of in the algorithm. And so it's like success breeds success. So if someone's um, left a, a comment or, um, or an engagement of some sort, then YouTube's algorithm, there aren't real people doing this, but the algorithm will say, oh, this is getting more attention. Let's give it even more attention. And so for me, that appears to be uh, what's going on. However, I am aware because someone did say the other day that they were they'd come here from Hollow Toad, 
which is not a YouTube channel I've ever come across. But as you know, if you watch YouTube at all, there are millions of YouTube channels out there. Uh, there's something to suit everyone, absolutely everyone. So I went along to their channel and had a look. And there it was, fair enough, five minutes in. They just mentioned something about me tidying up that big drawer. <laughs> so very, very, very boring. It was a, like a placeholder video while I was in Montreal. Very boring video, but people seem to have enjoyed it, which is uh, absolutely lovely. So uh, that was like a mention on their channel. I'm not sewing, am I? Carry on sewing, Kate. This is never going to get done uh, if you don't keep sewing, because it's quite a big quilt, this one. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a mention there. And so what I'm going to say is, if you're here because somebody has said, oh, I, I was watching Kate at the last Homely House, and you've thought, I wonder who that is, and popped along for that reason, I'd be absolutely thrilled if you would leave a comment saying where you've come from. And which would be even more marvellous if you could link to that channel, because I'd like to go along and say thank you. Uh, because it's like a big old sherry old community, isn't it? And I'd just like to thank those people for uh, giving me that little heads up. Because as I say, there's the, the subs, the subscribers to this channel have spiked this last few weeks. And I'm, I'm always curious to know why. Uh, so there's that. And I suppose as well, while I'm talking about leaving links to channels that might have mentioned the, the last homely house what i'd also like to say is you know i watch a few channels um that i really enjoy but there's loads that i don't know about that i might have missed so if you watch somebody that you really enjoy watching and you enjoy watching me there might be that there's uh you know i would enjoy it too so what i'm going to ask you to do in the comments in below is if you can leave not just the name of it but a link uh, a link would be would make my life a lot easier because then i would be able to just pop on that link and find that channel and you never know i might find a whole new load of people that i would enjoy watching over on my patreon channel somebody uh, i was talking about knitting and somebody recommended that i i went to arn and carlos who are a pair of norwegian blokes who knit well, I've loved watching them and I would not have known about them had it not been for that personal recommendation from somebody over on my Patreon channel. So give us some recommendations of people you like to watch because you like watching me. You know, I'm not, you know, if you're not bricklaying, I'm, although that might be quite interesting. Yeah, because some I, I actually do watch some, um, some making channels. I watch this channel where they make um, tables out of wood. So, yeah, maybe if there's a really interesting bricklayer, leave that. But what I mean is leave um, links. The links that I would, I'm would i going to invite are, oops, the ones that you you watch because they remind you of what's happening here. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I think so. OK, so it's going to be a, a link heavy comment section with a bit of luck. <laughs> I might be missing some really, really, really amazing people. Uh, that you really enjoy and I don't know about. So to keep going with the old YouTube thing, um, because of the, this little bit of growth and me thinking, maybe I should be doing this a little bit better than I am. Maybe there are some tips and tricks I could learn from tutorials. So I watched a few and I hit upon one. I'll leave a link to this guy. Primal Video is his name. He's in Australia. He and his brother, I think. And I've been watching. So if you were thinking of starting a YouTube channel, first of all, do it, because if you've got something interesting to say and time to do it and all of that, do it. Link to me. I'll be your first subscriber. I'd love to hear what, what other people are doing in the craft or gardening or animals or whatever community you're in, really. I've just started watching a lovely um new YouTuber um, and I'll leave a link to her as well Meadow Sweet she's a weaver and a textile artist and she's just getting going she just posted her second video and there's a giveaway for a hank of um, wool which you know if you're into wool well, who isn't 
then maybe you could uh, hop along. I'll leave a, a link to her in the description below because she's uh, it's her second video. And, you know, she's learning loads like I was in the very early days when I turned the camera on. Some of those, I, I never watched them ever, ever, ever. But just remembering them make me cringe out loud. They really do. I mean, maybe in six months time, these will make me cringe as well, because I will have taken on possibly some of the tips that I'm learning from these um, these these technical. I think the thing I... I'd say about watching this video this morning, I just watched one about how to film YouTube videos on your iPhone, which is exactly what I'm doing. And I came away from it reeling a little bit, thinking I'm not doing any of those things at all, not doing any of them. And uh, so I, I don't know um, if things are going to change a great deal around here, because one of the things was, you know, this guy mentioned was get your script ready beforehand. Well, I can promise you guys, I've never scripted a video yet. Occasionally, I might jot something down on the back of an envelope because I know I want to talk about it and I know that my memory is so poor that I'll forget. But there's no scripting going on here. And it, it made me th stop, stop sewing again, haven't I? Just a minute, I've got to carry on sewing. If you see me stop sewing, just shout at the screen, will you? Because I can't. Uh, I can't not do this because I have so much to do today that I really want to get this quilt binding finished today. So if I if I stop, tell me to carry on. Okay, you see I've lost the thread already. God, I do that all the time. So he was talking about getting ready before you start filming, and I'm going to show you now what my getting ready process is before I start filming. Sometimes I close the curtains if the sun's streaming in and I know that there's going to be quite a lot of battle with light if the sun's very, very bright like it is today. Always makes me feel a bit sad when I have to close the curtains to film because it's um, it's sunny. Makes me think that I should have get my wellies on and go outside. However, we're in the middle of Storm Dennis, so I'm not going anywhere. But no, I'll show you, this is what I do. I get the camera all lined up and I make sure that you're not on too crooked. And then I turn the camera on and then I do this. So that my hair's not sticking up. And then I start talking to you. That's it. That's the total of my preparation. That's it. Oh, this is the other thing I do. I make myself a cup of something. This one is um, Rubos tea. Oh, it's very, very good. Uh, it's quite cold as well, so I'll just have to get that one going. In fact, I'll finish it. It's just cold. <laughs> because it's very important to stay hydrated. <clears throat> a bit long. If it's too long, it gets a bit tangled. And that won't do. So I come to my first corner and I, all I do when I get to the corner and you've seen me do corners before, I might, you know, leave a link to maybe I'll leave a link to a binding tutorial up here because that's what I'm doing. I just make sure that whichever way that's going, it's going the same way on the back. It's the only thing I do, really. Just fold that in like that and then I don't use binding clips. Because although I've got binding clips, I find them pretty annoying. I use my thumb. So, and back onto the old YouTube thing. For the people who are new around here, I just want to explain something else to you as well. Because I see in the comments a lot of times this lovely, lovely comment from people saying that they turn this on <clears throat> when they see that there's a new upload and it's a, and, and unless it's one of my out and about videos or where I'm actually making something that's, you know, more got more stages to it or more edited. If they're just chats like this, people say oh, it's just a little bit like sitting on the sofa, having a chat with a friend, which is I love that comment. I absolutely love it. And so. For the people who are new around here, you might not know what it is we've got going on here, me and my viewers. So I'll tell you. 
we've got this virtual sofa it's as far as I can see and then some it just disappears off into the virtual distance and on the virtual sofa there are all of you guys some virtual cushions you can have them any color you like but in my head the virtual sofa is a lime green velvet with pink cushions did you know that the people who are on the sofa so what i say is bunch up a little bit to let the new people on just keep passing the biscuits down i'll tell you something about the biscuits the biscuits are always going to be your favorite biscuits whatever you like they're always going to be them and they're never going to run out but just keep passing that biscuit tin down and i'll be along in a minute to fill up your cup with coffee tea herb tea whatever it is you want so what i really mean is <laughs> you go and make all that stuff <laughs> so that while we're having this sit on my virtual sofa i love this it's just a, like a mental image i've got of all of you because you say that to me oh it's like chatting with a friend well when I'm making these little chats with you, I've got in my head just one person that I'm talking to, and that's you. I'm talking to you there on my big lime green sofa. Now, if lime green's not your colour, you can have your bit of the sofa any colour you like. So I was watching this video about how to make YouTube videos and thinking I don't really do many of those things. I do some of them. You know like getting the light right and i think the sound quality has improved since i started making this has to imp have improved because in the early days you know nobody could hear a thing so i'm hoping the sound's a bit better yes yeah, so subscribe guys that would be good there's some news coming soon i'm not going to tell you about it but it's coming soon because I do have a little online shop now. There's not a great deal in the online shop at the minute. What's in the online shop is the little books that I like to write, which are about different aspects of my life here. There are greetings cards that are all round and about the last homely house and the things that I do here. And that's pretty much it. However, all that's about to change because uh, we've got some new stuff coming for the shop, which uh, I think is going to be exciting, but we're also doing something new with the shop. So when I was in Montreal uh, visiting my son for his birthday, that spontaneous trip I made a couple of weeks ago, it's absolutely brilliant. He had to work for one of the days and Rita and I spent that day because Rita's his wife and she helps me to do quite a lot of the things to do with Patreon. In fact, yeah, I wouldn't be able to manage any of it without her and also without my other kids. So I have three children all grown up and they have three partners or, yeah, all grown up, obviously. It's a bit of an obvious thing to say. Who's this one, I wonder? Well, it's Rita because we're talking about her. And they, all six of them are an absolutely enormous help to me. I could not manage any of the things that I do here and on Patreon without them. I couldn't. So the way that the things have things have steadily grown and improved is all down to my fantastic kids uh, encouraging me, but also helping me practically. So um, Anna uh, helps me with photographing things and editing things and just generally being uh, here a lot to sort of um, to keep me on track, really. Because it's it's sometimes I just everyone needs a bit of motivation, don't they? And my kids are very motivating. Uh, John helps me in many many practical ways. That's my son, who's uh, Anna's husband. Martha and Adam and lovely lovely beautiful baby Agnes. They help me because firstly Martha, my daughter, is a fantastic illustrator. And she, I mean, she just doesn't even realise how, how talented she is. And she, and her bloke is um, an expert at laying out print, printing. He lectures in art at, at the university and he has helped me to realise 
one of the Patreon rewards that I make. I'll just show you very quickly. It's here. This is a little thing that we, the three of us put together, which is called Stories from the Last Homely House Kitchen. And February is, is, is gone out to people now. So I'm not going to wave it around in case people haven't got it yet. But February uh, uh, is uh, the second one. I started last month with um, soup. The Last Homely House, uh, Stories from the Last Homely House was all about soup. This one is the February one. So they helped to do that. And Martha just does some little, lovely little sketches and uh, Adam lays it all out and prints it for me. So that's that one. Rita then, when I was in Montreal, we were talking about the, um, the zine that she edits. And uh, here it is. This is the February zine. Last month was Indigo. This month it's Tangerine. And uh, it's a it's a magazine that's full of all sorts of bits and pieces, all sorts of features that we repeat each month and then some new things because next month uh, there's going to be some new stuff coming. I, th I write all of this and Rita lays it all out and does all the cleverness. It's brilliant, you know, it's really brilliant. So that's there over on Patreon. But why I want to talk about that is that, that oh God, keep sewing, Kate, keep sewing. The... I put out a weekly video on Patreon. Just lately, it's been sort of like extended chats. But last month, last week's, uh, they go up on a Friday. And because of technical glitches, this one went up on Saturday morning. I'm a day behind, aren't I? I think we can blame that trip to Montreal for me being behind. But the, um, the video that I put up there was all about making the gel prints that I use for the covers for the zines. And so it's, um, there's, that, that's actually the one I used, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one I used. And so I, and it doesn't look like anything until Anna's had her hands on it and photographed it in really high resolution. And then Rita makes it ready for the, uh, for the zine. But also what it means is I've got loads of, um, prints because I pull a lot of prints and some of them don't work. And like this one, for instance, which I like. But the gold on there just didn't photograph at all well. However, what, the reason why I'm showing you these is I've got all these fantastic prints that are now no longer usable for anything. But I've got a project coming up soon where I'm going to use all of those. I'm going to make some books, which is why I need to get these quilts out of my head, because I've got some book binding coming up soon and uh, very soon. And I want to use those leftover gel prints for covers, end papers, uh, pages inside and so on. So I'm looking forward to getting on with some books. I've got some big book ideas in my head that I want to make. So they'll be coming as soon as I've finished. Uh, I've got one more quilt after this and then a little break where I can actually start making some books. Yeah, good. Yeah, so Patreon then, pop along. I think, uh, you know, p if people don't know about the shop and about Patreon, then the, the links are always in the description, in the description box below. And just hop along and see uh, what suits you on Patreon. There's going to be uh, my monthly live stream, which I'm doing over there. I think I must do the post about that. I think it's next weekend. I can't remember. Uh, I haven't actually set the date for that one. But it's always the last Sunday in the month, unless there's a really good reason why not. And so the, because the 1st of March is a Sunday, that means that the last Sunday in February is quite early. So that's going to be coming soon. Um, that's good. Uh, so what else has been going on? It's been snowy here, really, really snowy. Uh, but this, then, the, then this big wind came, Storm Dennis, Storm Kira, just because they name storms. It doesn't necessarily mean that we like them any better, does it? A bit fed up with Storm Kira, to be honest, because there's such a lot of rain. And although I'm very high on a hill, so heavy rainfall doesn't really affect me. The rivers down in the valley were absolutely swollen and a lot of people's houses were flooded. And it's uh, it's been awful. I uh, really, if I start talking about this, I'll get really depressed. 
because um, you know wildfires raging in Australia, floods happening all over the world. I'm really not going to start talking about this because it's uh, it just gets me down. Then Storm Dennis. These storms, what they make me worry about, apart from how waterlogged my garden is, and so there's no chance of getting out in the garden for weeks yet. But it's also about my bees. I'm just really worried that they're not going to be OK. Uh, I've popped out to have a look at them a couple of times, but apart from just standing there looking at the beehives, there's nothing else I can do. So I'm just hoping that they make it through the wet. It's more wet than anything. It's very, very wet and cold out there. Yeah. So I've got miles to go around this quilt now. Um, miles. I'm going to crack on with this. And when I'm right round, nearly at the end, I'll come back and we'll wind this up. Well, so much for that idea. I finished the quilt. I stitched uh, the label on. I then took it outside to see if I could photograph it on the treehouse, which is where I like to do the final pictures of any quilts that I'm sending out. But the storm was raging, the wind was blowing, so I haven't got a picture of the final quilt, but never mind. Uh, so I've, instead I've been doing shipping and shipping. Anna came, we had a nice chat, that was lovely. And now um, that's the end of our video for today. I'm going to go off now and find myself something lovely for supper because that was all hours ago. And I will see you next time. So these are all the things to remember. OK. Subscribe. Thank you. Uh, leave a, th a like. Subscribe. Leave a like. Leave a comment. I read them all. Thank you. What else? Uh, share it. That's something people do. Do that. Um... Hop across to Patreon and have a look and see what's going on there. Hop across to the shop. Books, cards in the shop. More things coming soon. But then leave me a recommendation for a channel that you think I'd like because you watch me here at the last homely house. Patreon live stream was going to be on the 23rd of February at seven o'clock in the evening Greenwich Mean Time. I'm, I haven't made the post about that yet, but I'll make that before this uh, goes live. So that's all I've got to say about that. And um, thanks so much for watching, everybody. There's quite a lot of things you've got to do there. Also, shove up on the sofa and let some more people in because all those new subscribers will need their pink cushion on the sofa, won't they? I forgot to tell you that also on the or if you're sitting on the sofa, there are footstools. Had you noticed? <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>